Once you said you want to die on Mars, why? I, I don't, to be clear, I don't want to die on Mars. <laughs> um, it's, it's like, if, I mean, we're all going to die someday. And if you're going to pick some place to die, then why not Mars? When you, know. you do eventually colonize Mars, what, what's the idea in terms of terraforming? Is it contained ecosystems that were, are under domes? Like, what, what, are, what are you planning on doing to make it habitable? Well, at first, you would have to have a life support system um, because Mars has a low-density atmosphere, only about 1% the density of Earth, and it's primarily CO2. Um, now, over time, you could you can terraform Mars. Terraform means make it like Earth, essentially. Um, and if you warm Mars up, you will. Um, there's a bunch of frozen CO2 that will evaporate, densify the atmosphere, and um, you'd actually want kind of global warming. On Each Mars. century has an individual that redefines the world, a person who transforms the way we think and act, a person who fundamentally reshapes our understanding of ourselves and our place in the cosmos, as Iron Man in the Avengers series, grew up a genius with a brilliant mind for technology and inventions. Who do you think could be the Iron Man of this century? Pause the video right now and let me know in the comment section. As Iron Man keeps you shocked all the time with the whole Avenger series, either with his amazing intelligence or his wonderful technology, Elon Musk gives shocking surprises to this world, either by setting up a private spaceflight company or his advanced driverless EV. Yes, that man seems to be Elon Musk, or he can also be known as the Iron Man of the real world. He's the man behind Tesla Motors, Solar City, and the chief executive of SpaceX, a company that has ushered us into the era of reusable rockets, which has made no secret of its intent to send people to Mars. Yes, SpaceX plans to create a permanent Martian settlement. Musk has made it clear that he thinks such a colonization project will ultimately save the human race. There is a strong humanitarian argument for making life multiplanetary in order to safeguard the existence of humanity. To that end, Musk's plan included the launch of the unmanned Red Dragon spacecraft by 2018, then sending a new and reusable rocket by 2022, which will be powered by the just recently tested Raptor rocket, and eventually launching humans to Mars after that, hopefully landing by 2025. However, much of the details still need to be fleshed out, and that's what brings us to today. Musk doesn't just want us to touch the face of these extraterrestrial spheres. His intent with SpaceX has been to create a viable way for humans to actually colonize other planets and to live on Mars and presumably other suitable planets as well, sustainably in the long term. SpaceX's Mars ambitions are no secret, as Musk has been discussing settling the Red Planet since at least 2012. The initial plan would be to use 10 people to set up a colony that would eventually grow to as many as 80,000, according to his preliminary plan as sketched out back then. A lot has happened since then, including SpaceX successfully running a number of Falcon 9 missions. More recently, Musk has also been teasing progress on the Mars front, first noting that the Mars Colonial Transporter will need a new name, since it can go far beyond Mars, and then following that up with a test flight of the Raptor engine designed to propel the MCT. The big questions we'll be looking to answer today revolve around the specific technical details of how Musk plans to get to and colonize Mars, and how he intends to pay for the tremendous and likely expensive undertaking. Musk's highly anticipated speech at the International Astronautical Congress held at Guadalajara, Mexico, he indicated that finally he would detail how he would make his lofty ambitions a reality, covering potential colonization systems and discussing the involvement of industry and governments that will dictate the project in years to come. Musk outlined his SpaceX Mars architecture in an attempt to prove that this mission is something that humanity can undertake and complete. He began by noting that going to Mars, becoming a multiplanetary species, is not merely a choice, it's a necessity. According to Musk, we will stay on Earth forever and eventually there will be an extinction event, and the alternative is to become a spacefaring and multiplanetary species. That's what we want. The problem is that we don't have the technological capabilities to get to the Red Planet. Right now, you cannot go to Mars for infinite money. To that end, the biggest hurdles that Musk outlined are making our technologies and making them economically viable. He emphasized the need to make moving to Mars the same cost as the medium price for a house in the United States. According to Musk, this is the only way to make a truly sustainable society on Mars, as it would ensure that people could actually afford to move there. 
The median cost of a home is around $200,000. Musk said that reaching such a price through the use of traditional methods for space travel would be impossible. Unfortunately, current costs would be closer to $10 billion per person, which is totally not viable. To that end, there are four key things that Musk centered on in order to get humanity to Mars and make the costs work for us. The first thing is the full reusability of the rockets. We need to make rockets that we can use again and again because we can't use one-time use rockets for carrying people there. The second thing is we need refilling stations that orbit between Earth and Mars. The third one is propellant production on Mars. We need to be able to harness energy from the red planet. Last, but certainly not least, is a propellant that works. We need better, more efficient methods of travel. Musk also clearly articulated where we currently are in relation to getting to Mars. He broke down some of his points and his rationale in further detail throughout the talk, and he outlined how the staging would work. Best of all, he went point by point through all of the specs of his latest tech. And notably, he made it clear that this project would need to be a public and private partnership. It cannot be a single company leading the charge alone. Rather, the contributions will need to snowball over time. More investors and governments will need to chip in to make the colonization of another world work long term. But when could we actually arrive there? The Mars Colonial Transporter, or MCT, is one of SpaceX's in-development rockets that is set to be part of CEO Musk's Mars colonization plan. But he's not the only one working on these technologies. While NASA and SpaceX are collaborating on the Red Dragon capsule, NASA is building its own rocket, the biggest one ever, and is aiming at Mars. One contender in the race to Mars colonization is United Launch Alliance, whose Atlas V was selected by NASA for its Mars 2020 mission. Nonprofit organization Mars One, another contender, declares that they will establish the first human settlement on Mars. Prior to his announcement, however, one of SpaceX's Falcon 9 rockets exploded on the launch pad in Cape Canaveral, Florida, effectively grounding the company from spaceflight as it continues to determine what caused the incident. Despite setbacks, it's evident that Musk will continue working to achieve his goal. Indeed, noting that he has a proven track record of success is an understatement of monumental proportions. Company after company, he's proven what he's really capable of. In fact, just last night, he tweeted about the successful test of SpaceX's newest and most powerful rocket to date, the Raptor. It's no secret that space genius Elon Musk is planning to make human life multiplanetary. Last year, he even revealed to send at least a million people to Mars by 2050. While Musk's plan could be appealing to many, Britain's top astrophysicist has dismissed it saying that it was merely a dangerous delusion. So where there are innovations, there will be people who oppose those innovations. So regardless of how far-fetched his ideas may sound, it wouldn't be one to bet against him. The predictions also point to a decreasing working population in some countries. This would have significant economic consequences, researchers said, like lower GDP growth rates. Combined with a growing number of people entering retirement age, a smaller workforce poses hard fiscal challenges to public health and pension programs. In this regard, immigration could help world population growth to diminish, wrote the authors, spurring geopolitical power shift. The study mentions that countries that are able to manage to keep their working population through migration, like Canada, Australia, and the United States of America, could prosper. Estimates like these are, of course, limited to researchers' current understanding of population indicators. They may not be able to tell the future, but they can certainly shed some light on it. So, that's all for today's video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for more content like this.